Hey everybody, Obey the Papaya back at you again with another uh, YouTube video. So uh, first, uh, I wanted to say uh, that I've been looking at Reddit, right? And there was a post I was talking about kind of the people that they would love to ban the most. And one of the people that a lot of people are asking to get banned and have been actually getting dominated a lot in, in all tiers of play. But, you know, overall, what I would say the average ELO, low ELO and all that has been Grux. And Grux has been very dominant. But the problem, the thing is about Grux is that... He's actually very easy to kill. He is not really that strong per se. So uh, I wanted to kind of discuss and share a little bit of tips and tricks. You know, as someone who doesn't play offlane, but has went against a lot of Gruxes, playing Greystone, uh, playing as Crunch, uh, playing as Kwong, playing as Steel against him, and honestly beating him every single time after a certain point. You know, I wanted to kind of share that because I really think that it's something that you know. Um, you know, I want to help the community and kind of share that information. So let's uh, let's get straight into it. So Grux is one of the strongest offlaners because he doesn't aggro minions with any of his skills. So the only way to aggro minions is basically by hitting the enemy with a single target attack, excluding cleave from basic attacks. Cleave is the AOE damage that melee users have when they basic attack. So any type of single target ability... Uh, will basically force minions to, to come at you, right? And in Grux in 1v1 situations in the lane, he basically has the ability to pull you, knock you up, and then throw a bleed onto you and have uh, then do a RMB and apply like, you know, five, six stacks of bleed onto you, right? Before you're even able to do anything, you know? And that's the issue that a lot of low level players are doing. So how do, you, how do you counter someone who's able to push so hard in lane, right? Early game, right? Very, uh... Big emphasis on early game. And, you know, how do you play against that? So, um, you gotta wait. He falls off on all offlaners at level 6. Yes, he gets a stun. He gets a bonus in attack speed. But when he does something, he has to use almost his entire kit. It's very rare in low elo for a Grux to walk at you. And if he does walk at you, majority of offlaners have gap closes. They have escapes. They can just walk away from him. So you just have to wait until level 6. Especially a lot of these people that we're going to talk about level 6. They're very strong level 6. Right? I, I, you know, we'll, we'll discuss that. But, um... So you gotta wait. Play for XP. Farm for XP. It's okay if he has 20-30 CS on you. Don't give him CS and kills. Just give him CS. Just give him CS. As long as your level is basically almost on par with him, you're doing a phenomenal job against the Grux. Alright? So that's it. Don't let him snowball. That's that's the first tip. Um, he's similar to Chimera. I know because Chimera is a really big popular person right now, right? And, and low elo and, dom and, and high elo dominating. Um, but he's similar to Chimera, and his kit takes time to ramp up, especially once you get Bonesaw, even if you go Sky Splitter build. You know, it takes a while for him to start stacking stuff, getting HP. You know, he does really well when there's more people, but, you know, it takes time for him to really start to scale literally in the middle of a fight, like right when the fight starts. So the goal is to just CC him. I know, it sounds easy, just CC him. There's a lot of CCs, and hey, it's not... It's not, it's your fault if you're not playing someone or play or, you know, if you're in the offlane having trouble with him, uh, even as a jungler, it's your fault in reality if you're not picking a CC person. That means that you're not playing towards the meta, towards the most efficient strategy. So you, you have no right to complain if you aren't even trying to counter one of the most popular picks in the game right now, especially in average elos, all elos, which is Grux. So you have no reason to complain if you're not playing a character that's going to be used to counter someone who has like, a, I think, a 60% pick rate, 50% pick rate, right? I think we can see it here. Um, overview. Don't think... Uh, here, yeah, 55% pick rate. That means you need to be playing for him, you know? Like, they, they prepared that the enemy picks him. Um, so Dudu is mostly bruiser build, lots of HP and not as much tank armor. A carry building demo and sky splitter are going to melt him. And that is very, very true. You will melt, anybody's going to melt Grux as long as he's not, he doesn't get far ahead. It's simple as that. Uh, and you're going to have games when people aren't going to play properly. It's understandable. It's something that we unfortunately have to deal with. But it does not mean it, a game isn't carryable when you try to pick characters that can kind of beat him in lane, you know, and so on. So... Let's discuss the items right now, right? Uh, Razorback is a, for the people that are against him. Razorback, really strong item. Um, overall, especially with the, the heavy ADC meta, now you got Grim. Sparrow has a high win rate in low elo, uh, average elo. 
You know, so Razorback is a really good item because it gives you mitigation and it, re it re -give reapplies the damage to your enemy like 15%. Very strong item. It gives you more bonuses. It's very good. Uh, you got to use it when you engage a fight. When you see, you know, when you see Grux starting, basically when he ults, you know, you want to basically use it at that point, right? Because the thing is, it doesn't give you HP. So if you're at a 1 HP, don't use it. If you're at full HP, if you're half HP and he's starting the fight, that's when you want to use it and start punishing him. Tainted Guard, it stops his healing, you know, a bit. Uh, it applies a bleed onto him. It has really good armor stats. It's a very phenomenal item and it helps the entire game. This is a, it's a very important item in general to go Tainted Guard. Um, Sky Splitter and Demo, that's for the carries. I know Grux has been going Sky Splitter, which is really troll and benefits the carry and anyone uh, as the game progresses. He's going to do a lot of damage, but that makes him so much squishier when he goes Sky Splitter, when uh, Grux goes Sky Splitter. But Sky Splitter and Demo, they're going to be very dominant. That's, you know, that's what uh, the ADC is going to basically do to completely uh, destroy him, right? Um... Frosted Lure, really good for tanks, really good for people like Steel, right? While you're doing damage, this thing's just going to apply damage um, while you're just next to them. Um, I believe it's true damage as well. So it's, it's, it's a very good item. Gives you armor, gives you HP. Um, Fire Blossom, AoE damage while you're fighting him. Very strong item. Uh, Frost Guard isn't built as often, but it's something I like to add in, especially when you got a lot of attack speed heavy people. Frost Guard is very slept on, in my opinion. Uh, I highly recommend uh, Frost Guard, uh, you know, when you do have people that are heavy on attack speed, especially Grux who scales up in attack speed with, sti with Stifle, every second you're going to low or every second that the enemy is next to you, they're going to lower their attack speed. So this technically is a direct counter to Grux. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's a very nice item, with good stats as well um, for most tanks to build into. So let's discuss uh, Crunch, right? Let's discuss the overall... Op off laners right now and kind of talk how, how you would play against a Grux. Crunch is really weak into Grux until level 6. At level 6, and once he gets first item, whether it be Augmentation, Mutilator, whatever you want to build on him, really. Level 6, Crunch is going to be very weak against Grux. You're playing for levels. That's it. Once you're level 6, you better be telling your jungler, come to this lane every single time if you just want an assist. Because you should be able to absolutely dominate a Grux at this point. You know, and if you can't dominate him, you're able to farm and then you're able to escape because you're going to have a gap closer. And on top of that, your ultimate's going to be a gap closer. You know, and if you go mutilator route on him, you're going to do a ton of damage uh, by taking his HP, right? He's probably going to get a little tanky or Grux is going to get tanky. You're going to take some HP from him. Um, all right, then next is Fang Mao. So Fang Mao is going to get a little bit beat up um, by Grux early. It's going to be kind of a skill match. If you're a very good Fang Mao, but we're going to talk about pretty much balance matches you're going to be able to basically you want to try to get your q out once you see a grux engage he's probably going to pull the wave push lane and push it towards you and apply pressure luckily you have an rmb so when he does when he kind of already uses gap close on you and all that you just rmb and walk away basically you know rmb sorry you can use your alternate ability um and just gap you know gap away uh teleport away so you just got to farm up once again. Once you get to level six, he still can be pretty strong because he's probably going to be tankier as an assassin. You're going to have a little bit of trouble. Um, you could look into, I wouldn't even say go really bruiser build on Fang Mao. Dread, not Dread. Um, Omen is going to be really strong because it's going to allow you to apply your E twice. You want to use your passive correctly with Fang Mao. And make sure you stack it on wave on him. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, Greystone. Greystone, ridiculously strong against him after level 6. Very weak before level 6. But you're given an escape. Use your Q. Farm up. Once your Q is over, sit back. Let Grux take over. Uh, Grux will probably take over while you're queuing the wave, to be honest with you. But just try to last hit. Once you're level 6, you can start fighting him. Level 6 Greystone. You could take usually any crest that Greystone tends to take. You could take Razorback. Um... You could take Ice Scorn if you want to fight, but he's going to still be relatively dominant even after level 6. But your goal, once you get level 6, allows you to play really safe. Use your 6 to stay alive, and then continue farming, continue farming. Um, and then, you know, Grux is just going to kind of, after that point, Grux is going to just sit there. You distract him in your lane. That's kind of what the Greystone's good for. You can keep the Grux distracted at the lane, otherwise you push up. Or um, you follow, a you go do a rotation you know, as Greystone, then you just completely destroy their carry. You have two lives. Grux is just going to get CC'd and die, hopefully, from your team and from the carry. Because you want to be annoying with Greystone. So, you know, that's what it is uh, with Greystone. Uh, Kwong. Kwong 
you know, he has he's 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 strong overall. He does have a shield with his RMB. He might he's gonna. I'm not necessarily too experienced. It's hard to give true comfort. Uh, Kwong, you gotta you gotta play relatively safe. You start with the Fire Blossom build. You're gonna want to go Flux Matrix after Ella Frost. So Fire Blossom, um, Ella Frost, Flux Matrix still because it's still the best build for him. And then you're gonna have to go like you know. You're gonna have to go a crest for him. That's magic power. So you just gotta farm up. You have some uh, escapes. You have some gap close, but he, he can punish you if you're not done. You know, playing properly. So if you're overextended past the halfway point, sit back and relax. You know, like I said, you're gonna do a phenomenal job late game compared to the Grux. You just CC him. Your team will take care of him. So just don't don't feed. Uh, Sevrog is gonna get extremely punished by the Grux. So you just gotta play it. You got to play it safe, you know, early. Do not go even past the halfway point. You have some escape. You have some gap close, so it's nice. But it's going to be very rough farming for you. You'll have some heals. It's a, it's a skill matchup in reality. But I, a lot of people that play Sev early on, like, that aren't as experienced, they can get punished by a Grux relatively easily. Especially if Grux goes Sky Splitter, uh, he'll punish he'll punish Sevrog pretty easily uh, throughout the game, you know, until late game where Sevrog will just push Grux away while the entire team does whatever they need to do. So once again, play it safe. Like I said, you just need to play early game safe past uh, past six, then this week can be more aggro. Shinbi is actually probably one of the stronger counters to Grux. Once again, you know, her Q has really strong poke. You still got to play a little bit to six because if you mess up your RMB or get caught through your RMB, that's it. He kind of has a free kill on you, but you're able to poke with your Q. You're able to get farm with your Q. Play for XP, level 6, once you get your Mega Cosm or if you decide to go um, Life Binder or whatnot, you know, you'll still be very dominant on the Grux. Uh, or if you go Tainted, if you want to counter the heals a little bit. Um, you know, uh, Shinbi is a strong, strong, not necessarily a counter, but still can apply pressure and can battle a Grux, you know, just because of the Q spam. Especially because Grux, with two of his abilities, has to stand still, right? So Shinbi is just going to be able to throw pretty easy cues while he's in the middle of the lane farming. And she can just get some farm easily off that. Steel is pretty oppressive against Grux actually. Has a lot of good escapes, a lot of good ways to stop him. Every time Steel hits someone with a CC, they're going to get, you know, he's going to get a shield. So he's going to be able to punish him really well. So that's basically it. Uh, Zarus, super, uh, with Steel, I mean, you're going to go the Fire Blossom route. That way you can dominate. You know, that's why you can dominate him overall. Um... That way you can just sit inside there, get your shields, and kind of let him get passive damage. You want to build Fire Blossom ASAP because you're very, you have a lot of CC. You really want to get that boost in damage. Um, and then after Fire Blossom, Tainted Guard. Zarus, Zarus is actually very strong against him, and it's mainly due to his passive. So after combat and after his basic attacks and all his hits that he does on Grux, right? He's going to basically be able to heal whatever damage that the Grux did. So Zarus is oppressive. It still is a skill matchup overall, you know, as well. Um, because if a Grux knows how to perfectly time a Zarus escape and hits him in the air or grabs him at the time, Zarus can get a little bit beat up, but Zarus is given a stun. You know, he's, he has a lot in his kit to fight with a Grux. So that's just something, you know, once again, you get to level six, you get a jungle gank. He's done. He's dead. Grux doesn't really have an escape. He falls off really hard after level six in, in, in everything, you know, and it's something that I see a lot of low elo players fail to do. They keep inting and inting and inting before, you know, before they get their main power spike that's going to counter him. But I want to make this video, like I said, because I see a lot of people losing, you know, talking about how Grux is so overpowered when he really isn't. He's really, in theory, you know, he's, he's, he's subpar. He's normal. He's just a regular character. He has a strong early game and he kind of falls off after that. There's better characters that provide more utility and more damage, kind of, that's better. Grux can have some plays, it's not that he's terrible. It's that people are really kind of overdoing his kit. Oh, it's so strong. It, it really isn't. It really isn't. But uh, yeah, so let me know what you guys think of this video. If I missed anything, if I felt like I didn't explain anything enough, or this video is a waste of time, let me know so I can get an idea of things uh, you know that you guys do want to hear, that you are interested in. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. As it helps me out and motivates me. Um, and yeah. So on that note. Take it easy. Have a good one. Good luck in your games. I'll catch you later. Peace.